All right, we're continuing our dis discussion on depression. And um, a lot of times in life when we get depressed, and depression can be anything from sadness to long-term clinical depression. It can be just a sadness that uh, you just can't seem to shake. It can be uh, anything in the form of a mild, moderate, or severe clinical depression. And um, when we get that way, we often, the world around us, you know, doesn't understand. If you've never been through it, it's hard to comprehend. And most of us have been through sadness. Most of us have been through mild depression. Um, at some point in our life, we will all go through what is considered clinical depression. And um, at times like that, we'll get advice and opinions from our friends. And they'll tell us, well, it's you've been depressed long enough. It's time to just get over it. And, of course, it's not that simple. It's not that simple. You can't just turn a switch and suddenly change your thoughts and your emotions and your decisions. It doesn't work that way. In fact, uh, there's only one way that can truly uh, thwart or overcome depression. And um, we're going to be going through that as we, we go through this subject. But um, I have a lot of material to share with you. So uh, I want to at least make sure today that you leave here with uh, something that you can use in a practical way in your daily lives until we get into... Uh, you know, depression, what it is, what it's caused by. And we're also going to be talking about Elijah as a case study of how that a lot of our greatest depressions will fall on the heels of our best successes. We find that when we have our best success in life, then often right after that, we will have our greatest sadness or depression. And uh, it's a time when we as Christians are very vulnerable to the attacks of Satan uh, in that area. And Elijah is a perfect case study of how somebody was on the top of the world at one, on one day and the next day was hiding in a cave. Um, well... He wasn't in the cave the next day. He was 40 or a day's journey in the wilderness. The next day he was in a cave. But we'll talk about that. Um, but before we begin, I'd like to share a, a story with you. Um, there was a, a man who went to the doctor and he was suffering from some stress in his life. And uh, so his wife accompanied him to, to go see the doctor. And when he was done with his doctor appointment, the doctor called the wife in privately to speak to her. And the doctor told the wife, he said, your husband has a very uh, extreme stress disorder. And... Um, so what I'd like you to do is, if you don't do what I'm about to ask you, he is going to die. So what I'd like to ask you to do is, I, I'd like to ask you to never nag him, make him, bring him breakfast in bed, make him a nourishing lunch, make his favorite items for dinner, Never nag or upset him for the next couple of months. And I want you to make love to him at least 
three times a week for the next couple of months. And so after the doctor appointment and the husband and wife were on their way home, the husband asked the wife, he said, what was it that the doctor said to you uh, after my appointment? She said, well, the doctor said you're going to die. Of course, that's not a true story. <laughs> let's, talk, let's talk for a moment about my definition of, of depression. Um, you know, a lot of us have been there, and a lot of us understand um, the severity of it and how much of an impact it has on our lives. Um, and last week, what we discussed is the fact that the reality that we think we live in as human beings, and especially as Christians, the reality that we think we live in is not the reality that truly exists. There is a theory out there in science that uh, we are actually living in a sort of virtual reality. And um, the Word of God would kind of kind of back that up a little bit. You see, we tend to, as human beings, depend on what we can see and hear and touch and smell. And... But that is not exactly what reality is. Reality is the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God exists right now, right here, with us, here on earth. It's not something that we have to wait for in the future when Jesus comes again. The kingdom of God is something we can be a part of right now. And it's something that we should, as Christians, be learning and maturing in. And there's only one way to do that, of course. We're taught in God's Word. It's through the transforming of our mind. Using God's Word to transform how we think and what we think affects what's in our heart and what's in our heart affects what comes out of our mouth and the decisions that we make in our daily lives. So my, my definition of depression is that depression is really a, a virtual, a form of virtual reality. We tend to get stressed, we tend to get anxious, we tend to get doubtful in life based on a perverted view of the present or an irrational fear of the future. Let me run that by you again. At the base of depression, before you reach clinical depression, you're undergoing stress, anxiety, and doubt. And those things that are at the root of depression, they are actually a perverted view of our present reality. They have nothing to do with what is actually going on. The Bible tells us over and over again, we are not battling against flesh and blood. Our battle is against unseen forces, powers, principalities. Our battle is even against our own mind and our own heart. It's not something that we can see. And we often, you know, get the idea that, hey, uh, a loved one or a friend or, you know, this person is causing me such stress and anxiety that it's causing me to, to be depressed. Well, if that's what's happening, then it's happening because you don't understand that God has given you everything you need to overcome anything that anybody can throw at you. 
anything that the world can throw at us, anything bad that can happen to us, God already has given us the power to overcome it. We just have to know what we're going through and how to tap into the spiritual power that God has given us so that we can, uh, we can begin to transform and we can begin to crawl out of the pit of depression. So in my view, depression is, it starts out as stress, anxiety, and doubt, and it begins to build into clinical depression, but it's actually just a perverted view of what reality actually is. We look around the world and we think what we see is, is the reality that we have to live with, not according to the Word of God. According to the Word of God, reality is, in fact, almost opposite from what we think it is. Remember what Jesus taught us about being social. Remember what De Jesus taught us about our, our enemies. He taught us something that is, goes totally against what is normal human behavior. In the book of John, he tells us to love our enemies, to bless them that curse us, to pray for them that despitefully use us. If someone takes us to court, sues us for our coat, we're to give them our cloak also. If someone asks us to walk a mile with them, we're to walk two miles with them. And the Bible tells us elsewhere that if we will, if someone is giving us a hard time, if we will shower them with love, that it's like heaping coals of fire upon their head. So, you know, we have a normal human way that we react to things. God would like us to learn a better way to live so that we can live the abundant life instead of being stuck, stuck in stress, anxiety, doubt, even depression. And... Um, like I talked about last week, it's a matter of faith. We're going to find when all is said and done and when I'm done with this series that it really comes down to a matter of faith. What you truly believe and what you're willing to act on based on what you believe. So, since anxiety is uh, at the root of depression. Uh, let me give you my definition of anxiety. But first let me ask you, is, has anyone here ever been afraid of the dark? Or are you even today still afraid of the dark? You know... Maybe we're today, for those of you who are grown up, when the lights turn out and it's pitch black, maybe you're not exactly totally frightened out of your wits, but there is a real unsettling feeling about being in total darkness because you just don't know what's out there. And... Many of us have these irrational fears about things. When we were a child, I remember when I was a child and I was afraid of the dark and I would cry, my mom or my dad would come and they would try to reason with me. You know? I would either be afraid of the dark or afraid of what's in the closet or afraid of what's under the bed, right? Right? So my parents would come and try to reason with me, and they would try to show me, look, there's nothing in there, there's nothing here that can harm you, there's nothing that's going to jump out at you. But it didn't matter what they said. I still had this totally irrational fear 
of the dark or what would be hiding behind my closet doors or what might be under my bed. And uh, I wouldn't even hang my hand or my foot over the edge of the bed for fear of something snagging me and pulling me under. I'm sure most of you have had the same experience. I'm sure that most of us have that same experience today. Even as an adult, you hang your foot over the edge and you realize what you're doing and that there might be a mouse or a rat or a squirrel or something that's going to grab a toe and and off we go. Of course, it's totally irrational. It, it doesn't make sense. It has no basis in reality. It's a fear that has... Uh, that cannot be proved. It's totally unscientific. It goes against everything that we've experienced in life, and yet it is just as real a fear as any fear that we otherwise have. And that's what anxiety is. Anxiety is an irrational fear of that which does not truly exist. An irrational, totally irrational fear of that which truly does not exist. And remember what I talked about last week when I reminded you that as Christians, you know, if you're a lost person, if you don't have Jesus Christ as your Savior, then be afraid. Go ahead. Be afraid. Be very afraid. Because where you're headed is toward self-destruction and if you don't accept Jesus Christ as your Savior, it will be eternal self-destruction. So you have, a, you have a rational fear, okay? Yours is based on something entirely different. It's based on the reality that someday God will judge everyone. And what the Bible tells us, the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ. So, what Paul to tells us about faith. You know, when we get stuck in anxiety and stress, that can lead to de de depression. What it is, is it's actually doubting what our parents have told us. It's doubting the logic that surrounds us, but most of all, it's doubting what God has promised us. God has promised to provide for us. He's promised to protect us. God has promised to give us power to overcome anything that happens in our life. Right? Do you truly believe that? Do you absolutely, totally, unequivocally believe that? Well, we must not. Because if we truly trusted God the way we should, we wouldn't have these irrational fears. That's why we need to build our faith. And faith is not just believing something. You can believe anything you want, but until you act on what you believe, until you take action, it doesn't become faith. Remember, James said, you show me your faith without your works, I'll show you my faith by my works. Faith is something that, uh, faith is actually a verb. Faith has to be a verb. It has to be an action word. So you believe something, you act on it, it becomes faith. So in 2 Corinthians 5, 7, Paul tells us that we walk by faith, not by sight. So you look around in the world and what's going on in your life and how you're interacting with the people around you. And let me go back a slide here for a second. 
and you have this perverted view of what's going on, what's actually going on. And you have this irrational fear of what's going to happen in the future. If there's anybody here this morning that goes to bed at night stressed out about what's going to happen tomorrow, you're beginning to get stuck in this cycle of stress and anxiety and doubt. If there's anybody here today that uh, is just seems stuck in stress and anxiety and, and doubt about things, it's because you have a perverted view about what is real and what is not real. When we understand that what we the world that we live in as Christians is a world that is totally dominated by absolute, utter trust in God, in God's words, in the promises of God's words, then we begin to get a clearer picture of what life really is. So, when we get anxious, fearful, stressed out about things that aren't actually there, we're proving to ourselves, not to God, because God already knows our condition, we're proving to ourselves where our faith is really at, how much our faith has grown or not grown. Whether you're just believing or whether you actually believe enough to act upon what you believe so that you can engage your faith and begin to cha have a change in your attitude, to begin to have a change in your emotions. You see, it's so hard to get unstuck from depression because most of us just don't know how to get unstuck. And the first step is always to engage your trust in God. That's the first step. And we'll discuss the other steps that'll, uh, that you have to take uh, as we go along here. Uh, there's a couple of other steps that God, God gives us in His Word that we absolutely must take in order to receive... Uh, the victory over depression. So, if you're stressed out about something, if you're anxious, if you're doubtful, if and you also have to know this. I wanted to get a little farther this morning, but uh, I have to. I have to talk to you about this. God allows abrasive people to come into our lives for a reason. Notice how I said that. I said I didn't say God puts abrasive people in your life. God, according to the book of James, God is not tempted with evil, neither does He tempt any man with evil. Only every good thing that exists comes down from our Father above. Only the good stuff that exists comes from the Father of light. Anything bad that happens, happens because we live in a world filled with sin. And we live in a world that is uh, with people that are filled with sin. But God will allow abrasive people to come into your life in order for you to learn some lessons. Namely, where is your faith at right now? Are you growing in Christ or are you stuck? Are you growing up and are you becoming mature as a Christian? Or are you stuck being an infant in the Word of God. 
Um, he also brings abrasive people into our life, uh, just like uh, Joel Osteen in his message this morning, he, he preached about the pearl and about how, how pearls come about. A pearl <clears throat> has great value in the world that we live in, but it actually comes to existence by that something that is abrasive and something that is not pleasant to the clam. Clams live, you know, on the bottom of the ocean and they, they um, motate or move around using this tongue that comes out, this muscle like a tongue that comes out and they drag themselves around with it. Well, now and then they get a particle of sand or dirt stuck inside their shell around that muscle. And um, no matter what they do, they can't get it out. So their body's natural response to that is to begin to excrete a substance, a hard substance, that makes that little abrasive piece of sand less painful. Over time, it becomes something that is round. Instead of something small with sharp edges, it becomes something bigger that's round and something that is more tolerable and less abrasive to the clam. Same process happens in our lives uh, as Christians. Sometimes God will allow abrasive things and abrasive people to come into our lives so that we can produce, uh, he can produce out of that in us something of great value. Okay, and uh, so for this morning, we're about out of time. So um, once again, talk about my definition of depression. It's, it's a virtual reality that just doesn't sync up with what the Word of God teaches is real and true and honest. It is having stress, anxiety, and doubts as a result of having a perverted view about who you are, where you're at, and what's happening in your life. It's also an irrational fear of what might happen in the future. We go back to the idea that if you're afraid of the dark, you're not afraid because of something that will happen, you're afraid of something that might happen. And I guarantee you, you put even the strongest, most toughest dude on the planet, you put him in total darkness for a couple of minutes, and he is going to freak out. I guarantee it. Why? Because our mind begins to play tricks on us, and we start to think, I hear something out there. I feel something out there, or even I sense something is out there. It might be a rat, it might be a spider, it might be a snake, or worse, it might be a demon. Have you ever thought that? Ever been in a dark place and think, man, if there is really demons out there, they could snatch me and I wouldn't even know what hit me. But you know what? Demons don't work like that. They don't snatch us out of the darkness. And it's a totally irrational fear. That's the way anxiety and stress, that's the way they get to us. They cause us to doubt. When we doubt God, when we doubt the promises that He has made to us, when we doubt His care and protection and provision, 
then we're going to start to feel a form of sadness and depression that could ultimately lead us into a severe clinical depression. So for today, what I want you to leave with that you can put to practical use is you need to adjust your view on what reality is. You need to look into God's Word and know what you believe and why you believe it and adjust your viewpoint of what reality truly is. Jesus said, if you truly believe, you could tell that mountain over there to be removed and be cast in the, into the sea and it would be done. If you had the faith of a grain of mustard seed, then anything you ask could be accomplished. These are the kind of promises that God's children have received from Him in His Word. But you can't hang on to those promises if you don't know them or if you don't keep them on reference in your mind. That's why we constantly need to study God's Word because getting out of what sticks us, getting out of sin, getting out of depression, uh, anything that causes us to get stuck in life, there's only one way out, and it's by putting our total trust in God. Let's stop there for this morning. Everybody stand and we'll be dismissed.